Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So in today's video, we're going to be starting to go into chromosomal rearrangement, rearrangements with a focus today on duplication. So there are four different types of rearrangements and I'll introduce those today as well. But like I said, we will focus on just duplication rearrangements. So the last video, we you know introduced karyotyping and then also the different types of chromosomal mutations. Remember, this is when you have an altered chromosome structure or number. And rearrangements are going to be the first focus of the next couple of videos. This is a change in structure of that particular chromosome or chromosomes, uh, whereas the differences between aneuploidy and polyploidy, which we'll get into later. All right, so now today we're just focused on introducing rearrangements and talking about the duplications in more detail. So there are four types each with subtypes underneath for these rearrangements. So here we have the general overview and then there are types underneath and then subtypes underneath of those. So like I said, we, we'll break this down slowly in the next few videos. So here for chromosomal rearrangements, the first one are the duplications. This is where part of the chromosome is doubled. And again, we're gonna be focused on that one today. The next type is a deletion where part of the chromosome is deleted or lost. Next type of rearrangement is called an inversion. Think of something inverting and part of the chromosome is reversed by 180 degrees. And the last type of rearrangement is called a translocation. This is when part of the chromosome is moved to a non-homologous or a different location on the chromosome. An example of this would be, say, there is a a screw up and crossing over where a piece of chromosome five switches with chromosome 11. Now you have a piece of five on 11 and a piece of 11 on five. That would be a translocation. Uh, so just to lay out the next couple of videos, uh, first video here, we're going over duplications. Next video is going to then go over deletions and inversions. And last one, we'll talk about translocations and also talk about some significance of these rearrangements in terms of evolution. Uh, so how do these rearrangements occur? I just mentioned one, there could be an error in crossing over. Um, so errors in crossing over, you know, when you exchange two arms with each other here, you want it to be the same amount of genetic information from each arm. So an error in that could move one to a different chromosome, could accidentally duplicate a region, delete a region, um, so forth. So errors in crossing over is a big one. Uh, another one here is double strand breaks that are incorrectly repaired. So say there is a double strand break on this chromosome that occurred right there, and it moved that segment somewhere else and put an incorrect segment in here. Um, so double strand breaks. And also when you have a double strand break, we haven't talked about that repair mechanism yet, but it might flip it the other direction and put it on incorrectly. Um, so it could invert that whole region. Another causes here are these sites called fragile sites. So these are sites that are prone to breakage. They have, um, they could have little gaps in them or constrictions, which means they could break off. And some of these are common. So don't think of these fragile sites as rare. So these are found in all humans. So they are normal. And they're often the location of a breakage or rearrangement that can be found in cancer cells too. So again, pretty normal. Some of these are common, but some of them are also rare. And these are often associated with genetic conditions. One example here is fragile X syndrome. So what happens here, so this is a normal X chromosome. This is a fragile X chromosome. And right here is called the fragile site. The fragile site has extra CGG repeats in it. And that causes it to not be as strong as the original normal X chromosome. So it's prone to that breakage then. And also these are heritable. So in Mendelian fashion, they can be passed down from generation to generation. So that's just a little introduction to rearrangements. We'll go into some more details of these as we go through. But today I wanna just uh, focus on for the rest of this talk, duplication. So remember there are subtypes of each of these types of rearrangements. Duplications is when something duplicates, a part of the chromosome is doubled. These could be tandem duplications, displaced duplications, reverse duplications, or segmental du duplications. So let's go through each of these and define them and how they actually change what happens on the chromosome. <laughs> so first one here are tandem duplications. This is just when it's duplicated right next to the original. This is when, say, you have a sequence of A, B, C, D. Let's say B is duplicated. Now we have A, B, and then 
the duplicated version, B, C, D. So there, that B duplicated right next to it. So that's just tandem, just tandem. Think of riding a tandem bicycle. You're in line right next to each other. And then a displaced one is when it's duplicated elsewhere on the same or different chromosome. If it's on the same chromosome, it's called intra-chromosomal. If it's on a different chromosome, it's called inter-chromosomal. So this is when you could have something like A, B, C, D, and it becomes B, A, B, C, D. So that B duplicated somewhere else on this same chromosome. It's just not in tandem with the original B. Next kind here is called a reversed duplication. It's a duplication plus an inversion. Remember, an inversion is its own subtype of, you know, of a rearrangement up here, but when this part of the chromosome is reversed 180 degrees, it doesn't duplicate that region. So this one duplicates it. So it's when you go something from like A, B, C, D to A, B, C, C, B, D, where right here, this C, B was duplicated. And instead of duplicating this segment as B, C, which would be a tandem if they both duplicated, which is still a tandem, it's not just one gene, but it also switched. So then we have C, B instead of BC. And that happens because when you we haven't talked about the chromosomes and how this stuff happens yet. Chromosomes can form these little loop structures and loop around and flip around. So these inversions and duplications can happen pretty easily. Um, well, not easily, but you can see how they happen. They're not it's not magic is what I'm saying. And the last type of duplication is called a segmental duplication. These are very large, uh, greater than 1000 base pairs, and they are usually intra uh, chromosomal. And remember, intrachromosomal is on the same chromosome. So a large region duplicated itself. You just might not call, you usually call the smaller ones tandems. Um, now, just keep in mind when we're talking about these general overviews, you can have, you know, single nucleotides that are duplicated. Here we're talking about, for all of these duplications, we're talking about a large number of base pairs. I think it's like 5 million bases if they duplicated. Um, so not just, you know, five base pairs duplicated and repeated themselves. We're talking large duplications that are occurring here. And what effects does that have? Uh, sometimes it can have bad effects. So effects are usually related to gene dosage. Remember way long ago, we talked about X inactivation. Why did X inactivation happen with bar bodies? I'll put a link to the X inactivation video right here. Uh, so remember, X in inactivation happens because of a gene dosage issue on the X chromosome. Females get two copies of the same gene. Males only get one copy. Okay. So females have twice the amount of protein or enzyme they can make from X chromosome. Males only have one times. So X inactivation inactivates one X chromosome randomly in each of those cells. That makes the gene dosage then the same between males and females. So say we had a duplication here and, you know, one chromosome, you know, had A, B, C on it. And another chromosome had A, B, B, C on it. Where we had a tandem duplication of B here. Both, let's say these are just autosomal, so they're just going to be making the you know, normal genes. This one's going to make that B gene, and this one's going to make two B genes. So in the end, this is going to be 1.5 times the amount of the normal amount of B gene that's supposed to be made. So normally, this should just be one. So we're making three B instead of two B, or 1.5 times increase. Now, that doesn't sound like much, okay? That shouldn't be an issue, but... Different things like developmental cues are very important to have the correct gene dosage at the correct amount of time. Um, so, you know, there, there was an example I was reading about, about fruit flies and the size of their eye and having a duplications of a certain uh, gene, the 8.6 bar allele causes the eye fly eye size to change during development. And that's just, you know, a one little gene uh, duplication there. So major effects on development. I'm not going to go into too many more details, but this third allele can pose problems. Um, so, but that's all I have today for duplications. Next video, we're going to be going into deletions and inversions. Uh, so keep a lookout for that. 
and we'll be continuing down these chromosomal rearrangements. I figured it was better to break up these rearrangements into separate videos rather than giving them all to you at the same time as an information overload. So we're going to work through this nice and slow and have an enjoyable time. All right. Like always, if you have questions, let me know in the comments and I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.